Hey guys, Ron Klo here. I hope all of you are doing really well and having a really good day. In today's episode of BitX 101, do we want to take a look on the BitX itself, what it can do, what it cannot do, and what it actually is. So let's get started. As you can see, I currently do have two BitX boards here right in front of me. And we want to take a look on the BitX device and take a look and actually tell you guys about what this device is doing. So the first thing that we do see those two different boards here are basically the same thing. Like it's a BitX. What is a BitX? A BitX is, as we already have explained in the first episode of BitX 101, a open source mining device. And these two boards here are kind of the same, but at the same time, they are different. This one right here is the BitX Max. You could call it like the first functional BitX that was working on a BM1397 chip. This is a ASIC chip produced from Bitmain and it was put in the S17 miner. And this right here is basically like a device that uses this chip, controls it, and mines Bitcoin for you. This right here, the BitX Max, has like a estimated hash rate between 300 to 400 giga hashes. And this one right here to the right is the so-called BitX Ultra. It features the newer chip, the BM1366. This is from the uh, S19 series from Bitmain. So the BitX itself is only, and we, we put this simple here, a PCB. So this contraption, this board right here with all those components. And then it has an ESP, that's a microcontroller. And this one actually over a couple of serial lines that are on this board here. And if I do get a little bit closer, you can see there are some of those traces here on the board. And uh, it uses those traces in order to send serial commands to the chip itself. Let me quickly get rid of this cooler here on top of it so that we can take a look on the ASIC. So here we go. I just put off the heatsink of this device and what we can see here in the middle, this is one ASIC chip. It's a little bit gray, but this is due to uh, the thermal paste that is on there. And uh, yeah, therefore you cannot read what's on this ASIC chip. But nevertheless, what this device or this contraption does is, as I explained, it has this microcontroller and this microcontroller here is able with the software that OSMU provided um, control this ASIC chip in order to mine Bitcoin. And this ASIC chip is specifically designed to mine only Bitcoin. So you cannot mine any other currencies or as some of those Bitcoin maxis would call this, you cannot mine a shitcoin, only Bitcoin. And then we do have like this screen on top of here. And what this does is pretty cool. It actually provides you relevant information about your board, about your BitX. It shows you the temperature, it shows you the hash rate, the IP address, and a couple of other information. But the basic perspective is that you do have one PCB that is standalone, that you can use on its own, and it mines Bitcoin. In the OSMU community, we usually refer this as a solo miner or of some people would call it a solo miner because the hash rate is way too low in order to participate with big pools but this is also one of those incentivizers that we do have at the open source miners united community we incentivize people to tinker around and actually find a way to mine solo on bitcoin i don't want to go too deep into the topic of solo mining or pool mining but let's put it really simple. Solo mining means that you're trying on your own to solve the next block. And if you do so, you get the full reward. So what else can we see on this board here? We do have the microcontroller. We have obviously the ASIC chip that we control. And then we have like a micro USB here to the left. This is uh, also not like usual. The early versions of the BitX Max didn't even had. A, a USB port or anything else. They only had like serial ports like this one. It's a so-called JTAG port. And uh, then on the right hand side, we can see there is like the power connectors. And what you would need is you need a power supply that can put in five volts. And this brings me to a topic that I believe is really important. I do get regularly a couple of emails from 
fellow community members that are asking, hey, uh, do you guys do repair cars? Uh, mine is broken. I accidentally put in a 12 volt power supply. The short answer to this is no. If you put in anything else than five volts, you will break the complete board and you can put it in the bin. Uh, it's sad to say, but that's it how it is. That's why we do put in or put on here five volts so that you know, okay, I only should use five volts with this. If you do take a look on the bottom side of the board, we do see there are plenty of other components. And uh, on my YouTube channel, you will find live streams and videos where I do sort a couple of those components and where I do explain what those do. But for the overall view of a BitX device, you need all these parts on the bottom side of the PCB in order to control the ASIC chip. We do have other functionalities such as power management and actual reading of the power that we are using, which is needed in order to like, calculate the temperature or actually uh, manage the temperature on those devices. Because what you usually would do is the higher you go with your frequency, the more power you draw. This device here roughly pulls between 5 to 15 sometimes even up to 25 watts it always depends on how much frequency you ramp up or the voltage so how quick you want this asic chip here to behave and in order if you do ramp it up a little bit it also increases the hash rate but it lowers the efficiency and the bitx board itself is all about efficiency and the capability of solo mining bitcoin because this device obviously is there to incentivize people to solo mine Bitcoin and uh, yeah. So let's take a look on a new version, a so-called BitX Ultra, which basically is the same device. It only features a couple of changes. Most of those changes that you do will find, and I will get into this topic in just a second, are usually to increases uh, for the production or the ease of production. So um, don't feel FOMO or anything else. If you do have a BitX Ultra 2 1, don't feel that you do need to purchase a 2, 2, 2, 3 or so on. If your device is mining and it is hashing, keep it as it is. As I always refer, if it hashes, it hashes. And that's, that's really the incentivize. Keep this thing on if you can and uh, then it, it does what it should do. Um, for this example here, the 2.1 version, it has a couple of changes. For example, uh, instead of a micro USB, this one uses a USB-C and uh, yeah, basically that's it. The barrel connector has been here on, on this device as well, instead of those old uh, pins where you need to plug in a specific cable with a specific cable shoe. And uh, yeah, I do have a bit halo on this board, but that's nothing for today's topic. It's uh, just here because I had this laying around. I do think that covers everything from the basic perspective of what a BitX device is. And I do hope that you will love this video and all those future episodes that will arise on this channel. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss out future videos. Thank you for being here and see you next time.